Hey everyone, welcome to this battle report, um, which is um, Grafo, sorry, um, Eldar Soup versus um, Farsight Enclaves. Um, this is part of the Great Scottish TTSD. Is that the right name, Innes? Something like that. Yeah, this is this is something that Innes set up because you're I'm getting bored. I want you to run. Something uh, no, I just want to play more 4K. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, so this is uh this is this is me, basically me forcing myself how to to learn how to play Eldar. Um, uh, focusing on the Quins uh, Codex, and I think this is you learning how to play Tau? No, I just felt like it would be funny to make everybody suffer. Yeah, so we'll run through my list briefly. The list will be in the in the description of the video down below. The list that uh, we we um, as, as submitted to to the tournament. Um, so starting over here, I've got a Craft World Spearhead with a with a, a standard Autark. It's got three night spinners in it. The craft world is custom. It's expert crafters and masterful shots. So reroll hits and wound per unit, and um, ignores cover. So it's quite tasty. A uh, bit of tasty is the other word you're looking for is disgusting. Tasty. It's tasty. Uh, over here, I've got a frozen stars battalion. So with three troops, in it, two troops have a crest in them because I have some points left over. They've got three Star Weavers with their twin, with their double uh, Shuriken Cannons, uh, Tripmaster and Solitaire. Sorry, uh, Tripmaster and Shadow Seer. I'm still learning the name, so I apologize. Um, in there as well to lead off the battalion. Got three Elite Choices, double Death Jester, one of them's got the Relic Sniper, um, and uh, the Solitaire. Then I've got a unit of six bikes with Zephyr Graves and. AWR cannons, then I've got a Kabbalah the Black Heart Battalion Detachment with an Archon who's got the Venom Blade to be cheaper and Drizar leading it off, three units of Cavalite Warriors and two Razorman Jet Fighters with Disintegrated Cannons. A uh, slight disclaimer, uh, Innis just has just enlightened me about Drizar screwing up my Vect access. So Vect says that the battalion, the detachment only counts as a Kabbalah the Black Heart Detachment if every single model within that is 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 part of the Cabal of the Black Heart. Drazar is not. Therefore technically I lose it, but for this tournament Innis is being very gracious and allowing me to have yeah, access to it. He didn't know. And it's also like a really weird thing that's Yeah, it's one of those like dodgy things that only kind of makes sense if you look at it from the right angle. Yeah. So we're not playing it like that. Yeah, but in future lists I'll be very careful and also once Drazar dies I get access to it legally, so I'll just I I'm, not entirely sure how that, I'm not entirely sure how that works. I'll but. just I'll just feed them to your to your three cold stars turn one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. I'll just kill all your models turn one. It's fine. That's that that will, that is exactly what's going to happen because uh, <laughs> uh, Quinn's into Tau is a hard matchup. And we'll come over here and have a look at. No, it. it's not. Nice easy win for you. Don't say that. It makes me it makes me look somehow worse. <laughs> um, over here, we're going to look at Innis's army. So why don't you run us through? Uh, starting with your infantry over here, and then we'll move on. Uh, yeah, so I looked up one of Richard Seagull's lists and went, yeah, that'll do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you even try and write it yourself, no? No, I don't know how to do. Uh, so this is a... They shoot. They shoot and then they shoot yeah, some more. Much. So this is a triple battalion Tower Farsa Enclaves list. Uh, I have nine squads of Breachers uh, with their shotgun things. I don't know what they're called. Um, seven of the squads have Guardian Drones and Shield Drones. And then two of the squads have two shield drones. Uh, so the Guardian drones give them a five and vulnerable save, which is very nice for squishy models like these. Then I have a fast three fast attack squads of drones, four shield drones each. Um, nine crisis suit bodyguards uh, for the extra attack and point of leadership, I think. Yep. Not that it matters. Um, I had access to some stratagems. So nine of, nine of them, seven of them have ATS and double... Uh, fragmentation projectors. One of them has Iridium Armor, two Fragmentation Projectors and ATS, so there's the red guy, and then this guy, instead of one of the ATS, uh, AFPs, has a uh, Shield Generator, just for the form of save. He's also got the Relic of Ignoring AP1 and 2, so he is the most annoying model in the game, is basically how it works. Yeah. They've also got four Shield Drones that come in with them. And how many points yeah. is this Is this one unit? 501. <laughs> Literally over a quarter of your army is this one so unit. So Seagull's actually been running a version that's got uh, like nine, uh, 9 or 10 cyclic ions in the unit as well. That unit runs about 580 points. 
<laughs> but he loses an entire battalion to do that, so Jeez. I didn't really want to screw about with that because it looks like it's a much more difficult list. Yeah. And then we've got our command section, which is exploiting the lovely fact that Farsa Enclaves are not restricted to one commander per detachment. We've got two cold stars with uh, two shield drones with four missile pods each. One with just four missile pods and shield drones. And then three enforcer commanders with cyclic ion blasters and an ATS each. Yeah. And then one is the Warlord with pure tight engram neuro chip and uh, advance and shoot without penalty. And yeah. that's I'm, it. I'm just and then I've also got um, the Talisman of Arthur Moloch on this guy for a five of vulnerable save and one deny. Yeah. Because Tau can deny now. It's yes. so good. You, so have, to be, you have to be far to do it, but it's worth it. <laughs> one deny. <laughs> it's a regular deny with no benefit for a relic. But so man, sometimes it. it's all you need. Yeah. Um, well, it's just nice for being able to shut down. Just saying, yeah. right? You have to be able to. You have to respect this guy's threat range. Yeah, and um, um, uh, just for those who don't know, the so the weapons that all the uh, bodyguards have is basically an eighteen-inch range mortar. And yeah, so it's, so it's eighteen-inch range, it's, it's quite four, a minus one, one damage, ignores line of sight. Yeah, so it's actually quite a short-range talent overall, but then the cold stars give it some teeth. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's 17 D6 mortar shots. Yeah, it will blow up anything back. it shoots at. <laughs> and then you can do stuff like ignores cover and get them plus one to hit and reroll yeah. one and all that good stuff, you know. Just, 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 just as a yeah. thought, where are your marker lights you, in this army? Uh, they're in a stratagem called uh, pick a unit, it gets five marker lights. Okay, cool. <laughs> so uh, Also, Farsa Enclaves have two faction benefits. So the first one is when they're within six inches, they're your ones. And when they're within 12, they count as having one marker light on the target unit. Cool. And what does that one marker light get you? Real ones to hit. I've got two units of Cabalite Warriors, uh, Drazar, the Archon, and my Shadow Seer. Uh, all my Ultrarchs over here. Death Jester up here. And up here, just to give some fire support. Unit of Cabalite Warriors here. Then inside this transport is, is one troop with a with the caress, the solitaire. She's got a bunch of bunch of Harlequin stuff in that transport. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I you can see what's on the screen here. All right, Ennis, talk us through your castle. Okay, I put everything in this building, uh, except one squad of fire, one squad of preacher, which is over here, and I put one commander in deep strike, and that was it. Okay, <laughs> nice and succinct. The cold stars are up the top because they've got range of the night spinners from there, so that's what we're going with. Cool. And they're all protected by being where they are. Yeah. Yeah, that's the range to the night spinners there for anyone who's interested. Cool. Um, we'll come back to you with the end of the move movement phase. Okay, everyone, welcome back to the end of the Eldar turn. Uh, so I moved up my bikes and two of my star weavers across this way. I used private pathways to get the star weaver, the sky weavers in from over here as they're a bit out. Uh, Shadow Seer shifted over here to do so. Planes moved up to take some pot shots. Uh, killed what um, unit of drones here, unit of drones here, and did, took a couple of other, other units down to one wound. Is that right, Ennis? You killed ten, you killed ten drones. You put two down to one, uh, three units down to one, and yeah. one unit down to three. Yeah, so this turns all about just skirmishing, taking down the drones. Um, so we're going to come back to you with the end of the Tau turn. All right, Ennis, what happened in your turn? Uh, I shot a plane. It died. I moved out a bit. Yeah. Cool. We're not doing a tactic discussion in in, in, in the turns because there's a, there's a, uh, there's I a tournament game. I got this objective. I got this objective. I got home more. Uh, yeah. Chris got killed more because he killed two drones. I really low rolled on the damage against this plane and... Uh, I got six wounds through from the first plane and rolled five ones for damage. Yeah, it was ridiculously low rolling. More should have died that turn. It was a little disheartening. Yeah, but oh, um, we'll see how well, we do in the end of round two. Okay, everyone, welcome back to the end of the Aldar turn. Um, so I sh brought over my Shadow Seer to give the aura abilities to my important Harakon units. I've also wrapped this squad here just to get a bit more board control. Took out a drone. Took out some drones with this plane here. It was a bit underwhelming. Night Spinners also took out some drones. It's, uh, the other thing that happened is that this Death Esther tried to advance the Fire Fade away from this Cold Star Commander. But in doing so, he's kind of suicided because he didn't get the far enough from the advance and didn't want to spend 2 CP to save his Death Esther. So I have to just take my licks on that one when it comes in Ennis' turn. So we'll come back to you with the end of that. Okay, Ennis, what happened in your turn? 
Uh, I used my mock car to advance up and put some shooting into these guys, make Chris burn some CP. So we spent four to try and keep them alive. I put um, six damage on them, so I killed two bikes. Uh, I shot this plane out with the various shooting, and I put 11 wounds on this night spinner and two on this one. Yep. I got the bonus point, and I pushed up to get my recon point with this guy and the edge of this crisis squad. Cool, nice so you're 11-9 to you right now. Yep. All right. Yeah, end of turn. Yeah, so we'll come back to you with the summary of the turn 3 for Eldar. Okay everyone, welcome back to the end of round 3 for the Eldar. Uh, so, there was a bit of shooting, I wiped out a lot of the drones that are back here. Uh, with the shooting, I think only 4 drones survived, uh, survived the shooting. I was then able to get some quite, quite nice charges off to get back into those drones with some troops to clear, up, to clear them out. And I tried to kill a bodyguard. I think one died because of psychic damage. One died because he took psychic, so I didn't want to put it on my good bodyguard, so he died. Yeah, so, I, so I'm so i pretty sure Innes will be able to fall back looking at it as he as we film him live doing this. But um, the only movement six because this guy shot him and it's minus two movement and they can't overwatch. So hopefully um, they'll be stuck here, but it's probably not likely. Um, so yeah, let's see if I can survive the Harlequin, sorry, the uh, Tau beatdown. Um, this is a score sheet by the end of this turn, but I don't know who's interested. Alright, Ennis, uh, what happened in your turn? Well, Chris did manage to hold these crises in combat, so they stayed there and just did some more punching with the reroll hits and wound stratagem, which is not in any way broken. Uh, I charged him with my coal, with my cold stars into the Stabivers, managed to chip one down with the help of the Breachers. Um, he completely failed to do any damage to me other than one. I failed two saves to see if he riddled one of them. So I took one damage from a troop, and that was it. Yeah. Uh, my Death Jester, I killed the Death Jester with the Cold Star. I finished off the one with Night Spinner and picked up the other one with the two Cyclic Enforcers. And then I've got a Cyclic Enforcer back here who's just going to score me some bonus points in the late game. That's about you know, it. I just realised in this. You've taken a damage on your special guy, so if I get a uh, smite off, that could, uh, that could finish him off. Uh, no, at the start of your turn, I'm going to pay 2 CP to heal him. <laughs> you could have started my turn as well? Oh my... Any turn, yep. <laughs> ah, well, we're going to come back and we can all see my dis uh, my absolute despair <laughs> at this. So I'm going to roll the to see if I heal him. I don't, so he's down. So I just go down to 1 CP. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, it's not a turn, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone go go to whichever friendly local game store you have and buy Crisis suits because they're broken. All right, welcome back. Um, it's the end of the turn four for Eldar. Um, I cured off a lot of the smaller units there just to guarantee I keep getting kill more. It's keeping me in the game. Uh, this unit of Cablite advanced out to take this objective. Um, I killed the squad that was in here. Oh, I'm going to do my tax back in the combats at the top as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll do that. Um, I'll roll the stage we'll after. Wait, we'll do that at the end. Yeah. So, uh, the Skyweavers in Solitaire tried to come out and start hit the Cold Star. I almost got him. Uh, the the, the Shadow fell back, tried to try to pathways herself away, but failed it. Um, but she has got the 6 up shrug, so maybe she'll survive. I don't think so, but maybe. Um... I got myself double recon and a game bust a point by just Trezar being a badass and actually taking down one of the Crisis bodyguards. Um, oh, also the sniper shot this guy and did four wounds to him, so. Three. Three wounds to him, so. I took one from the stick, like. Yeah. <clears throat> so hopefully uh, these bloody commanders will start dropping. You've got one save on the tw on the, tw the teal squad of Harlequins. I pass it. Harlequin save. Um, Alright, we'll come back to you with the end of Ennis' turn. Alright, uh, hey everyone, welcome back. Um, Ennis, what happened in your turn? It was kind of a... Lack uh, of I, shot, turn. I shot some stuff. I killed the solitaire, the bikes. My guy failed to kill there, but I killed the last night spinner. Yeah. It was okay. Yeah, yeah, getting rid of that night spinner was, was really big for you. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a close game. I'll show you the scoreboard. I'm currently in the lead just at 22 to 18. Um, unfortunately, Ennis is going to probably get a plus 4 from the ground control, so it's more or less tied up even. So we're going to come back to you with the end of the Eldar turn. 
Okay, welcome back to the end of round summary. Uh, so, Lactos returned from the Aldar, um, didn't really kill as much as I wanted to. Cleared out some troops up here. I, I think you I, killed I, two commanders. I did kill two commanders, that, that was nice, but, you know, wanted to kill the Warlord as well, but couldn't quite get it. And then, in this, what happened in your turn? I shot everything I killed. Yeah. Except this one Cabalite Warrior. Yeah, I've got one very annoying Cabalite Warrior over here for an instant. two rounds of combat from a fucking cool star. <laughs> Language. <laughs> um, right. Uh, so we're going to bring combat to you with the end of turn of round 6 summary and then a recap of the battle. Okay, welcome back to the end of the game. Um, so it ended with a tie, but let's see how we got there. So Ennis, what happened in, 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 in this round? Uh, I killed the characters that were in this building, failed both my charges on this, killed this, failed to kill this with a cold star and yeah. cold star in combat. And in my turn, just before that, I killed... Uh, and also Yeet got lucky and killed the cold star from yeah. fuss from full wounds. And with a uh, smite and a hallucinogen grenade launcher doing flat three damage to a leadership nine model, you know, average. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then I got uh, the troops to kill off the unit here and take control of that objective. And yeah, just my star weavers held out just long enough. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to do a little. Uh, Ennis has to run off, but I'm going to do a little tactic breakdown, at least from my point of view, and what happened uh, for everyone. So we'll come back to you with that. Okay, everyone, welcome back. Um, so. Uh, just to give you a little tactic breakdown, and we didn't want to go into it too much in the game, as this is a, this is a tournament game. So my general plan, I can't speak for Ennis of course, but my general plan was to skirt around the, out, the outskirts, stay out of range as much as I can. I actually outranged him by 6 inches with the majority of my firepower. And then the um, Shadow Seer adds 6 inches uh, to the distance between my units, my Harlequin units and um, Innes' units, so I was hoping to combo that to really get out of the threat range from his short range firepower. Um, that kind of worked for the first few turns, but I realised I had to do something when Innes started to run up the board here, because he was just going to overwhelm my lines very, very quickly, so I went for an all-out charge and thinking that if I can kill off the drones in the shooting phase, I can maybe half wound to maybe even taking out if I get some lucky rolls. Crisis suit units, but that one crisis suit model with the two up save followed by the four up invul, which ignores AP 1 and 2, which is all of my melee apart from Drazar, and the Twilight Fang on the Troopmaster. Um, I was hoping that, that I could you know, deal, with, deal with him, but it just didn't. The other thing that kind of happened, which really screwed me over, was my troop master, my warlord, with the twilight fang, got taken out very easily by the crisis suit bodyguards, um, who interrupted me when I had that mass charge. Uh, when that happened, I knew I could not stand and fight, so um, I foolishly spent three, three, three CP to try and remedy the situation, to try and use the bikes to fight twice and take out a couple of body of bodyguards but it just didn't work so what I ended up doing was I ended up skirting around the back here uh, which actually worked out really well taking out his what the remains of his castle and focusing on the side objectives I abandoned the middle of the table altogether apart from Drizar who was a roadblock for a few turns which was which actually worked out really well. If I was playing this again I would really focus on the skirting around a lot more and I would not have charged in I would have just swept around the corner here and taking out his castle come from behind let him take up my uh, my my castle here sped up the tank so he has to run and run after me um as I can't speak for Innes unfortunately he had to run off and um, so um I'm sure if he has any opinions on how the game went he could put it in the comment section below um I believe you can find Innes on Twitter there's a previous video we had with him last one which we which we can find out his social media. He's as part of Team Scotland and Team Grasshammer, um, so uh, check out their content as well. And uh, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this content. There'll be uh, four more of these videos, hopefully, in my journey to learn this hard, this Harlequin dominant Eldar soup list. Um, so yeah, you got those four games to look forward to, uh, depending on if the opponents agree. Um, if they don't, I'll do a kind of 
summary of the game very quickly by myself so you get to see the overall story of this league. So yeah, just to show you guys the score sheet one last time. Here you are, so Innes getting the bonus three times, I didn't get it once. The bonus in this mission, of course, was to uh, have three characters on three different objectives. Um, I think gang bosses might have been a mistake, but I honestly didn't know what else to do. Butcher's build worked out really well because so many small drone and creature teams that you could just kill throughout the game. Um, I don't know, maybe behind enemy lines might have worked out better, but hey ho. Live and learn. Anyway, please like, comment and subscribe and catch you in the next one.